Hello everybody and welcome to episode 30, the big 3-0. Congratulations again to everyone who has stuck it out and made it this far. In this episode, we're going to allow our slime buddy to finally get some revenge on the player. You can see he's able to headbutt the player, make him flash red, take uh, half a heart of damage, and also become briefly invulnerable for a short length of time so we can like... Uh, you can see when I get hit there, I can actually pass through him. So the first thing we're going to do is do a little bit of setup in our player object. So find O player, go to the create event, and just in and amongst your uh, your variable definitions, we're going to add three new variables. I'm going to add invulnerable equals zero. Okay, that's zero, not false. Um, that's going to be, while it's above zero, we're going to be considered to be invulnerable. So if we set it to 60, it will mean for the next 60 frames, we are invulnerable. And that's the whole way we're going to use that. Um, the next variable is going to be flash equals zero, similar to our entities and the way we made them flash. But I'm also going to put in a variable called flash shader equals sh white flash. All right, before we just reference the, the white flash directly, because that's the only flash our entities we're going to use, but we're going to put in a red flash um, into the game for the player, but we want the player to be able to but there might be circumstances in the game where we want to use the white flash as well So what we're going to do is we're going to have a Variable in which we store whatever flash we're currently using and we can just allows us to easily swap between different shaders that do different colors or different effects I am trying to keep things still fairly simple wherever I can So that's why we're gonna have just different shaders for different colors rather than have like one shader that takes in a color and 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 does the flash for us, which would be the more ideal way to do it. But this way is, is very simple, very easy to understand, and it works and is perfectly flexible enough. Next up, we want to make sure that our invulnerable variable and our flash variable decrease over time towards zero, so that when we set flash to be something or set invulnerable to be something, they'll decrease over time towards zero. So we'll do that in our step event, which happens every frame. Um, we don't care what state we're in, so we don't have to go through all of our different states and uh, and, and, and plug that into them. We're going to decrease our invulnerable and decrease our flash no matter what state we're in. Um, the only condition is that the game should not be paused. So where we've got if uh, not game paused, we're going to widen this into a code block instead of just one line. And not only are we going to execute whatever our state machine is, uh, we're going to do invulnerable equals max invulnerable minus one zero and flash equals max flash minus 0.05 or zero. Okay, that'll decrease flash by 0.5 each frame and invulnerable by one each frame, but it won't drop them below zero, okay? Because it's always gonna return whatever's bigger. With that done, we're going to implement a little flickering effect whenever our invulnerable is above zero, okay? And what we're gonna do in order to do that is uh, in our draw step where we draw our sprite, we're basically just gonna skip this every now and again while we're invulnerable. So up here, I'm gonna write if invulnerable, uh, is not zero and invulnerable mod eight less than two close bracket equals zero close bracket and also flash equals zero. So assuming our invulnerable is not zero and our flash is zero because if our flash is above zero we want the flash to take priority over this um, this flickering effect. Uh, so assuming we need to care about this at all. Uh, we're going to check to see if invulnerable mod 8 is less than 2. Mod returns the remainder of a division. So if invulnerable was 16, 8 goes into 16 twice with nothing left over. So it would return 0. Um, if invulnerable was 15, um, it goes into it once with 7 left over. So it would return 7. And then it would return, if it was uh, 14, it would return 6, 13, 5, and so on. And counting down over time, okay? Um, so what this will do is make it so every eight frames um, invulnerable will be zero and we'll count down from uh, from eight to zero every eight. So again, to be clear, just like counting down from 16 again, that was a useful one, it would return zero at 16, then seven, then six, then five, then four, then three, then two, then one, assuming we're counting down, okay? So that's uh, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, and so on, okay? And then we get back to zero and then back to seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, okay? So as invulnerable ticks down, uh, getting mod eight is making it follow this pattern, okay? And it would follow a similar pattern if we did like mod four, uh, 16 would be zero, then three, then two, then one, then zero, then three, then two, then one, okay? 
Another very commonly used one is um, mod 2, because then that gives you um, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, right? Uh, if you do a number mod 2, it means like every other value is going to be uh, 1 and every other value is going to be 0, right? Which is very useful. Uh, modding something with 2 is a good way to tell if something is even or odd, right? So it'll, it'll give you this depending. But as you have probably started to notice by now, doing mod and a value is a good way to set up a reliable pattern that happens as a number increases or decreases over time, right? Um, and so by doing invulnerable mod 8 and then checking if it's less than 2, it means we get this little window every time, okay? Let's add that 0 on the end there as well. Um, and if we were to go over this, this would obviously be uh, 2, 1, 0. So every little 2, 1, 0 we come into, this becomes true. So you can see, like, for 3 frames every 8, um, this becomes true, okay? So that just creates a little pattern for us of true then, true then, and true then. All right, um, which gives us uh, the window we need to make our sprite skip. And in order to do that, uh, so assuming all this is true, we just have a little blank code block here that says skip draw, and then else it with our draw. All right, so if all this is true, then we just don't draw anything. And uh, if it's not true, then we just keep drawing the sprite as per usual. And now we can test this is working by just going back to the create event and setting invulnerable to be, um, say, 120. So for 120 frames, uh, two seconds, as it were, at 60. Run the game. You can see we're kind of flickering now for three frames every eight. Now you can play with these numbers, um, put it however you like. You could do it um, uh, every four frames less than two, be much faster much faster flicker, uh, and so on. I just I just liked 8 and 2. Those were the numbers I liked. Um, you can do whatever you want. Um, you don't need to do it less than 2. It could just be if mod 8. You, know, you, you get the idea. So before we move on, let's uh, just set invulnerable back to 0. And now we need to actually make the function that hurts our player, now that we have the, the functionality for invulnerable and so on. Um, so I'm going to minimize objects here, go to scripts, and I'm going to make a new script in theory, we should start like collating our functions um, rather than having each function be one script. Uh, but I figure for now we may as well keep to the workflow we've used so far to sort of avoid confusion. Um, so we're just going to call this script hurt player, and that's just going to contain the function hurt player. All right, we can get rid of this default uh, thing up here. I should probably get rid of that in preferences, but for now it's fine. Now let's make our font nice and big. Okay, we want three arguments for this function that are going to be uh, direction, the direction we've been hit from, um, the amount of force we've been hit with, uh, which determines how far back we're going to get knocked, and uh, lastly and probably not least, uh, the amount of damage we actually want to deal. Let's uh, put that on the next line. I'm just going to write the function and then I'm going to talk you through it. All right, so the first thing we want to know if we're going to hurt our player is, is the player invulnerable? Because if they are, then we don't need to do anything else because they're invulnerable. Then we want to reduce our player's health by however much damage that we're supposed to take. So um, when we don't want it to drop below zero, so we'll use a max function um, just to put it to whichever is higher, zero, or their health subtracting the damage that's supposed to take. Next up we want to check to make sure our player's health is still greater than zero and if it's not then we'll come down to this else and we'll do whatever we need to do to kill the player that's probably going to come in the next part but assuming they still have some health left uh, we want to do a knockback effect all right luckily we already have a state designed entirely for this we've got player state bonk for when we roll into walls and we get to reuse that to do exactly the same thing um, uh, when we get hit by an enemy, okay? I'll just middle click that just to bring us to it so you can remember how that works. Okay, we, we set like a speed and a move distance and uh, set our direction up correctly and we get knocked back using that um, little hurt sprite, okay? Like this one. Okay, so back over on our hurt function. So we set ourselves to the, the bonk state. We set our direction to be whatever the direction of the force is minus 180. That's because if you remember, bonk actually moves you backwards from your direction okay so we kind of want to face the direction that uh we uh we are being knocked in um you know whatever enemy hits us is going to know the direction from the enemy to the player um so we're going to take that direction and then reverse it so the player is facing towards the enemy um so that they get knocked 
away from the force, all right? Move distance remaining is simply set to force, whatever variable we passed in here, so that's how we determine how far we get knocked back. We do a little screen shake since we have the function to do that. Nice little touch, just adds a little bit of gravitas to getting hit. Uh, flash will set to 0.7, even though we don't have the functionality to actually make the player flash yet, that'll come in a little bit. Um, and we set invulnerable to 60, so they can't be hit again for the next uh, 60 frames. Now all we have to do is make it so we actually use this function, all right? So let's go to our p enemy object, because I, I think for the vast majority of our enemies, we're going to want to make it so if they touch the player, that the player gets hurt. You might want to only do that for some enemies, or do checks to make sure they're a, a touch damage style enemy or whatever it is. Um, but for now, we're going to keep this simple. So every type of enemy we're going to have uh, is going to hurt the player on touch. So with that in mind, P enemy, uh, we want to go to a collision event. Add a collision event with O player. And if that were to happen, we want to do hurt player, open bracket. And you can see at the bottom here, we've got the, the things we need to pass in. The direction, the force, and the damage. All right. Uh, the direction is simply going to be point direction x, y, so wherever this enemy is, and o player dot x, o player dot y. Um, let's make this big so we can actually see what we're doing. Um, so that's just going to get the direction between the enemy and the player, which is what we want. Uh, that's the direction. Uh, the force is going to be enemy force touch, and the damage is going to be enemy um, damage touch. All right, which are not variables that currently exist. Uh, but we'll make them now. Okay, so let's come back to our workspace now. Uh, still with our p enemy object, go to variable definitions, scroll right to the bottom here, and we're just going to add a couple of new variables. I'll zoom right in here. We're just going to name them what we just named them in the, uh, the, the collision event. Okay, so enemy force touch uh, is going to be 32, all right, uh, by default. So 32 pixels, like a tile or two tiles, I'm not, I don't even remember. Um, An enemy uh, damage touch, which by default uh, we're going to set to 0.5 or half a heart, okay? Um, and then you could go into uh, O-Slime if you wanted um, and come down to, oops, uh, scroll down to the bottom here and we could set those to be different so they, you know, a slime could deal 2 damage or, or whatever, um, but I think those defaults are pretty good. So that's now, we, we can see that in action now I think, so let's press F5 run the game, just run over to our slime, who's going to headbutt us for half a half damage each time. Uh, I think our health is still set to something weird, which is why it's <laughs> sort of uh, maybe a little tricky to see what, what's going on there. What, where do we set our health? Oh, game, I think it was. Yeah, so our health is 3.92, so let's just set that to 3.0 and um, health max to 3.0 as well. Um, just so it's really clear, run into our enemy, headbutt, half a heart, each time. You can see when we are flickering and invulnerable, we can run straight through the enemy and don't take any damage. If it would kill us, you'll see nothing happens because it's expecting to send us to a dead state, which we'll come to next time. Okay, lastly, we're going to add the, the red flash. Really straightforward to do. Works basically the same way as our white flash did. I'm going to duplicate our white flash shader and call it sh red flash. Come to the fragment shader. It's the second one on the little tabs. And here where we added flash to all of these different values, what we're going to do is um, still add it to red, but from our green and blue, we're going to subtract it. All right. Um, that basically turns this into a red flash shader. All right. Uh, we can then close that and open up our player object again. I'm just going to press Control T, type O player. So I just don't have to scroll to find it. Go to the draw event. And in here, when we would actually want to draw uh, the player, we're going to say if flash does not equal zero, shader underscore set flash shader, you flash is going to equal the shader get uniform flash shader flash. You'll remember when we did flashes for other things with the white flash, we actually did the uniform getting in the um, the create event, but since we don't know which shader we're going to be using here, we'll we just have to do it after we set the shader. Uh, and then shader set uniform f u flash flash. Okay, so it takes our, our flash variable and sends it across to the shader. Then underneath our draw, uh, we want to say if shader current open bracket close bracket does not equal minus one. That means we've got a shader set. 
shader reset. Okay, no need to call that if we don't actually have to. Um, we just call it if we happen to have set a shader of any description. Leaves us flexible to set other shaders and things instead if we want. Now at the moment this will make us flash white. Um, and I can show that super, super quick. We run the game. Run into him. Yeah, because our shader is currently set to SH white flash. All right, so we're getting a white flash when we get hit by the enemy. Maybe you like that, but I like to think, you know, when, when we're getting hit, it's kind of a negative thing. And a good way to reinforce that is with a, a red flash, just from a design perspective, really. Um, so in order to make it use the red flash instead, when we go to hurt player, uh, and we're doing the with player stuff down here, um, just include in here, uh, flash shader equals SH red flash. All right. Simple as that. Run the game. When we get hit by this guy now, we flash red. And we take half heart damage and we become invulnerable. Alright, thanks for watching guys. Um, as you can see, it really doesn't take... We didn't write a whole lot of lines of code this episode. And it doesn't really take much to get a really nice sort of polished um, like on-hit effect like this. It is really worth doing. So uh, make sure you do take the time to add this sort of thing. Um, to your games, get that little invulnerability flash, get the the red on hit flash, you can, you, the, the player gets plenty of feedback and they know what's going on. Alright, hope you enjoyed this one, we'll get the player to actually die next time, um, and I'll see you then. A huge shout out to my Patreon supporters, without whom I couldn't do any of this work, and a big shout out in particular, and in no particular order, to the following cool kids, of which there are way too many, we're gonna try and speed run these names. Tranquil, Leonardo Ferraz, Elizabeth and Landon Brown, Gage Hunter, The Game Guru, Julian Cropley, Darnell Braxton, Michael Kolich, John Kenai, Stephen Jenier, Borgia MK Ultra, It's Matt Poor, Hello Winter, Rachel Stewart, Arctics, Feral Princess, John C, Team D, Jordan Hake, Dalvor, Vacants, Phil Keen, Pong Pong Zhao, Jason Welch, Andrew Gilbert, Reva, Kaiser Ho, Boris the Wizard, Zach Collett, Figgy, Cabbage Pants, Yoram Pater, Leo, Scott Matthews, Mark Berger, Samir Nyai Legaglo, Rene Dam, Rupinda, Hair, Dark Rider 0318, Jason, Relentless Rex, Bertie T, Dakadondigo, Robert Churches, Jonathan, Basler Dog, Scott E. Wing, and Max M. Thank you all very much for your support. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you all next time.